Okay, number six, another series problem. You're, you're probably noticing a lot of number sixes are these series problems. So our instructions are to write a third degree po Taylor polynomial for the function described above about zero. Let's go ahead and do the formula in general and then we'll plug in our specifics. So the third degree Taylor polynomial is gonna be the value of the function at zero plus the value of the derivative at zero divided by one factorial times x to the first plus the value of the second derivative at zero over two factorial times x to the second, and then uh, the third derivative at zero over three factorial x to the third. Uh, by now we should kind of get that formula down, but that's what I'm looking for. Uh, what I really want to find in this problem is these values, and they turn out to be either in the table or in the graph um, depending. All right, so uh, our third degree Taylor polynomial. The value of f at zero, here's my function f, right? It's this f along with the tangent line. f of zero is just gonna be three. So that's the value of the function at three. Uh, the derivative at zero is the slope at zero. And so if I look at the slope of this tangent line, it looks like I'm going down two over one, down two over one. So that's a slope of negative two over one, x to the first. The second derivative at zero is in this table, right? The second derivative at zero is gonna be the number three. So that's three sixths x squared. And the third derivative is negative 23 halves over three factorial, which is six. Oh, I made a mistake, sorry, this is two over here, my bad, x to the third. All right, let's simplify everything, clean it up. I get three minus two x plus three halves x squared. And then when I simplify this, I get a minus 23 twelfths x to the third. So the third degree Taylor polynomial they're looking for in part A is that. All right, part B said write the first three non-zero terms for the McLaren series for e to the x. So while this is a start from scratch problem, it's actually pretty easy to generate these because e has some unique derivatives. So if the function I'm looking at is e, the first derivative is e, the second derivative is e, the third derivative is e, in fact, every derivative is itself. Uh, when I look at those uh, at zero, I'm gonna get e to the zero, which is one, f double prime is also one, f triple prime is also one. So I'm gonna take the formula that I just did, but this time instead of uh, numbers, right, I'm just gonna have ones in all those spots. Remember McLaurin and Taylor series um, are really the same thing, especially Taylor series at zero and McLaurin series are, are the same thing. So um, for this McLaurin series for e to the x, I'm gonna have the value of f of one, which is um, one, plus one over one factorial x, plus one over two factorial x squared, plus one over three factorial x to the third, and so on and so on. It asks us to find the second degree so I can actually stop right here. So one plus x plus one half x squared is my answer. Now in B, they ask us to find e to the x times f of x as a um, series. Let me write down what f of x was from our previous problem, it was three minus two x plus three halves x squared minus 23 twelfths x to the third. So I've got this series for e to the x, I've got this series for f of x, and now I want the series for the sum of, oh, so the product of these two. So what you basically have to do is multiply these together and keep doing it. Obviously there's an, an infinite number here, but I want all the terms that are gonna be a second degree or less. All right, so let's kind of think about this um, as you know a, bi a trinomial times a trinomial, and then we'll see that we actually won't have to do all of this stuff. So if I did the first three terms of the first series and the first three terms of the second series and multiply them, there's a lot more than that, but anything higher than this is gonna be higher than a second degree. And we just have to kind of start distributing stuff out. Uh, one times three is three, one times minus two x is minus two x. One times three halves x squared is just gonna be three halves x squared. 
The next term here is going to be a cubic term, and so that's more than I need. I'm looking for a second degree only, so I can kind of stop there. Uh, then I'm going to do x. x times 3 is 3x. I'm going to line up the columns here. x times minus 2x is minus 2x squared. And I could do this times this, but that's going to be a third degree, and I don't need any third degrees. Right? And then finally I have this, which is uh, 3 halves x squared. And again, this times this and this times this are all higher powers, and so I actually just have these six terms. I want to combine them together. So my final answer for b is going to be 3 plus x. Um, this is going to be 6 halves, which is 3 minus 2. So I get just plus x squared. All right, so there's quite a bit of work there for part b, but the final answer ends up being a pretty simple series. All right, uh, h of x is going to be related to f again. Let's um, write down the f series again so I have it to look at. 3 minus 2x plus 3 halves x squared minus 23 twelfths x to the third. You did that in part a. All right, and h is a function that's the antiderivative of that. So it says use the Taylor polynomial found in part a to find an approximation for h of 1. So let's find a formula for h first and then I'll plug in h of 1. Um, so I'm just going to take the antiderivative of every term here. So it's 3x minus, this is going to be x squared over 2, and the 2s would cancel, so just x squared. Um, this one is going to be x to the third over 3, and the 3s will cancel, so I have 1 half x cubed. This is going to be x to the fourth over 4, so that's going to be negative 23 forty eighths. And I could keep going, but um, it says uh, use the Taylor series in part A. So actually, sorry, we stopped here in part A, so we're going to stop here. For this one, h of 1 is going to be 3 minus 1 plus a half minus 23 forty eighths. And we should be able to figure this out without too much trouble. Um, this is going to be 2 plus a half minus 23 forty eighths. And if I change all these to a common denominator, I get 96 forty eighths plus 24 forty eighths minus 23 forty eighths. Uh, these two are 1 48th, so I get 97 48th as my final answer to C. And finally, uh, if I look at D, it says that H converges for all real numbers X. It's also known that the individual series alternate and decrease with an absolute value of 0. In other words, it's an alternating series. Use the error bound to show that the approximation that we got in part C differs by at most 0 0.05. So let's look at C again really quickly. So I added up the um, first four terms of H and I got this answer. Remember that the next term is gonna be my error. So the actual value of H of one compared to the estimate that we got, right, um, is gonna be uh, if I take the absolute value of the difference there, it's going to be less than the next term. So I have to think about what this next term would have been. So we actually have to go all the way back to the table here and figure out the fourth term of f. So that's going to be um, 54 over 4 factorial times x to the fourth. Right? 4 factorial comes from the pattern that we had in part a. Uh, remember that h was the antiderivative, so this is going to be 54x to the 5th over 5 times 4 factorial, which is actually 5 factorial. And so this term right here, when I plug in 1, is going to be 54 over 5 factorial. So that's my error. And 5 factorial is 5 times 4, 20, times 3, 60, times 2, 120. So it's 54 over 120. And if I simplify that, um, I get, um, 6 goes into both of those, I get 9 over 20. And so that 9 over 20 is actually the same thing as 0.45. All right? And so that fifth term, to go all the way back and find the fifth term, is the error for the first four-term estimate. And so um, this is kind of the work that you would need to show for that.